Well, welcome back, everyone, to our daily devotions. We're so glad you're with us as we're continuing our journey through the book of Revelation. We hope that it has been an encouragement for you thus far as we're almost halfway through uh, this great book. And we've titled today's devotional, God's Sustaining Grace. And I needed to follow up yesterday's devotional with grace because we talked about what hell looked like, would look like on earth as it shown to us in Revelation chapter nine. But in the midst of that horrible description of evil coming to the earth when the the doors of hell are open, as it were, uh, with Satan himself coming, a high-ranking general demon coming, as terrible as that is, in the midst of all of that, guess what we see? The grace of Almighty God. And so if you're listening to this right now and watching, if you have ever doubted, you have trouble doubting or have reservations about God's covering, his refuge, his support, his care, and his grace for you. Look no further than Revelation chapter nine. See, you and I in this life are gonna go through some horrible circumstances. The enemy is gonna do everything he can to be at our heels. You're gonna be tempted when you're alone. You're gonna be tempted in a crowd. You're gonna be tempted when you're in the gutter. You're gonna be tempted when you're doing great and on top of the mountain. You're gonna be tempted when you're climbing the mountain. You're gonna be tempted in this life. And there's gonna be evil all around you. You you can't move to a different state and find less evil, it's everywhere. Fact of the matter is, is that anything that you face in this life is not even worth comparing with the hell that is gonna be unleashed upon the earth. The evil is gonna be unleashed upon the earth. And as terrible as that will be in Revelation chapter nine, guess what? God promises to protect his people. Look what it says in Revelation 9. In the midst of this horrifying, terrible scene, this catastrophic evil that is released on the earth. Listen to God's grace right here. Revelation 9, 4. Then the demons were told not to harm the grass. We'll explain that. At least give a thought of why that is. Of the earth and any green plant and any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Let's break this verse down. Now, why couldn't the demons touch the green grass and and the trees and the bushes and so forth and on? Why could he touch the greenery? Well, most likely some time has elapsed between the first trumpet being blown and now the fifth and the sixth trumpet being blown that you would have time for the grass and the bushes and the trees to put out some more green. And why is that? Well, because people got to eat. People have to eat, and that's how they're eating. The water supply has been seriously damaged by this point. We know the food supply, it must be very hard to come by food. There's been famine that's been unleashed upon the earth. And so really, people are eating off the land. That's how they're surviving. Um, And not only God's people, but also people who are rejecting God. And we see God again being gracious. You could almost miss it if you read quick. Being gracious here. Don't touch their only source of food. But then something even greater. The the people who do not have the seal, they're going to be subjected to this evil. But the people who do have the seal of God will be protected. And that group is twofold. That is first the tribulation believers those who have come to Christ in the tribulation, those who entered the tribulation via after the rapture, entered the tribulation as unbelievers, and they got saved. Maybe it was a family member in their life who constantly was telling the Christ, who got raptured. Now they've they've come to Christ because they realize they're not around anymore. This really was, this really happened. And, excuse me, I lost my mic here. I get excited when I talk about the grace of God. And now they've come to Christ and now they're refusing to follow the Antichrist. They're going to be protected when all of hell is unleashed. And then the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, they will be protected as well. They will be protected from at this point in history, hell's greatest attempt to destroy mankind, right here in Revelation 9. This is hell's great evil party. And as great, and and listen, you got to take the devil seriously. He's a formidable foe. As horrible as the fifth and sixth trumpets are, 
they are nothing compared to the covering of Almighty God. And this is what we call God's sustaining grace. Now, my friends, God's sustaining grace works the same way today. God wants to cover you and I as well. See, every time we make it through another day, God's sustaining grace is working in us. Too often we give credit to, uh, mystical credit to things like luck and karma. No such thing. Every time you come home, especially driving on these streets, give thanks to God. Every time you fly somewhere, even though you pray before the trip, pray after the trip. That's God protecting you. Every time you, you come through with this day with all the evil going around, give glory to God. It's not for us to know all of the protection that the angels give to us, but how many accidents have been averted? How many times have we been spared, maybe from somebody doing harm to us? You will never know on earth, and maybe you may never know in heaven, give glory to God. God is protecting and sustaining you from evil. And as much as we like to get down all the times we give in to our stupidity and our temptations, glory be to God that we haven't quit yet. Glory be to God that we haven't done an about face and that we're not working with the enemy. Thanks be to God that his sustaining grace has us listening to a devotion right now about the word of God. We could be anywhere right now. We tend to focus on, I'm not this, and I don't have that. How terrible is this? Listen, God is at work in your life. His grace is sustaining you. He who has begun a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. Thanks be to God for his sustaining grace. He's going to sustain believers and will be the greatest unleashing of evil of all time up until that point on the earth, and the believers will go through fine. Reminds me of when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the furnace. They came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. The only thing that burned off of them were the ropes that was binding them, and that's it. God will protect you the same way in this life. Put your trust in the grace of Almighty God, not luck, not karma, in the spirit of the living God. Give thanks to God. And God will open up more doors in your life. You know, as a parent, I'd love to give what most parents do, and especially grandparents. Love to give. Love to spoil kids. Love to do it. We always want to give our kids more and more and more than we had. And that'll be what our kids do. It's a natural thing of loving kids. It's what you do. You want to give kids things. At the same time, though, as kids get older, you realize that you have to parent uh, in a, a balancing type way that if, if a kid isn't listening and following the rules of the home, you keep giving to them, what you're doing is you're going to wind up enabling their bad behavior. So you got to do things like punish. And, you know, at first you feel bad about it, but then as the years go on, you realize that uh, you're, you're loving them by doing it. And so the same way you want to bless them is the same way you need to correct them. And God operates the same way. And we need to be thankful for that. We need to be thankful that God wants to bless us, but also that God corrects us so that we could avoid the horrors of something like this. And so thanks be to God. Look what it says in the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. His love endures in Revelation chapter 9, forever. And so... Trust in the Lord to sustain you. Now, how do you do that? Pray. Cast your cares to the Lord. Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. He will sustain you. See, my friends, remember this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's from Hebrews chapter 13. He is unchanging. He cannot move. And so, we must trust in the sufficiency of his grace now. The same grace that sustains these believers is the same grace that's available for you now to overcome whatever evil, whatever temptation, whatever defection, whatever disunity, whatever disorder is coming at you right now. God will give you that same sustaining grace. We must trust in him. 
we must give ourselves over to him like these believers did. Listen to these words that Jesus spoke to the apostle Paul. And we'll close with this. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Jesus said, and this was in response to Paul's prayer. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. My friends, our battle is not against flesh and blood. My battle, your battle is not against a family member, a neighbor we don't get along with, a person we don't like. It's time to mature. It's time to grow up. You're going through the book of Revelation. You might as well. It's time to stop looking at the world and going, my problem is with a race or my problem is with a political party. No, our problem is with the principalities of this world, many of which who will be flooding the earth in the fifth and sixth trumpet. But thanks be to God, greater is he that is in us than he who will pollute the world here in Revelation 9. Glory be to God that he protected those believers. And thanks be to God, he's going to protect us in this life. So I close with this question for you then. Where's your trust? Is it in the sustaining grace of God? Or are you hoping for lady luck to help you? Are you letting it ride on life's dice? Well, the dice are loaded, by the way, with evil. Don't go that route. Trust in the grace of Almighty God not the dice of this world. Trust in God and his grace. It will sustain you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for your sustaining grace. Even in what will be a great time of evil upon the earth, you will protect your children. And we trust that you'll protect us now. I pray for any of my brothers and sisters right now who are struggling, who are getting beaten up by evil, Lord. Let them call on your grace. Let them cast their cares upon you. For you have promised that your grace is sufficient. We sow these prayers now in the mighty, sustaining grace of Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. God bless you.